In this podcast, I'm going to have a look at making sequences with Max MSP. The reason behind this is so you can use objects in Max to automatically roll through a variation of different numbers or different tasks all over a certain period of time, but you don't have to do anything to make that happen. The first object we're going to use is the Metro object, which is a new object, and it's Max MSP's built-in timekeeper. And you, there are two ways you can select speed of Metro. It works in BPM, much like Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase. And you can type in either an argument after the name of the object, or you can use a number box and connect it to the right hand input of Metro. The next thing you're going to need is a toggle box, which is a built in switch in Max MSP. So if we connect that to the left hand input and if we lock the patch you'll be able to see what this does. You've got a blank square and when you click it, it basically puts a cross through it which toggles between on and off, so off, on. Just to show you this working, I'm going to add a bang at the bottom of the metro. And like in the previous tutorial, you can just press the button. But now, Metro will automatically trigger the bang instead of you having to press it yourself. So if we just turn it on. Now you can use this box here to change the speed of the Metro as well. So if you look, you can see if you type in 50, you can't really see much, but it's banging every 50 milliseconds. So we'll take it up to 500. And you can see it a bit clearer. And um, 3000. It's basically then banging every three seconds. So now we've got Max to send out automatic messages to one button. We can now use an object called Cycle to send multiple messages out automatically. So Let's just have a look at the cycle object. As you can see, I've put a number 10 after it. This, you can put this as anything you want. It just means how many things are going to get sent out. So say you've got 10 numbers that you want to get sent to different places. There you go. So let's connect the output of Metro into the cycle. And just to show you what's going on, I'm going to use some buttons so you can see. Let's see. And now we just need to connect up each output to each button. These outputs at the bottom of cycle vary depending on what number you put after it. So if you put four, there'd only be four outputs. Okay. Let's just see what's going to happen now. And as you can see, Cycle is just rotating around all of its different outputs. At the bottom here, I've put together a quick patch just involving something you might recognise from the calculation podcast. And just showing you how to use it practically and what uses it might have in your music patches. So all I've done here with this addition part is again I've got the box here where you can type in your root note or your MIDI number so we'll go for C which is 60 and I've got all these sums here you can work this out yourself on your keyboard if you hold down C and count how many notes it is to get up to D then that's your first sum. Same again but up to E and so on and so forth until you get back round to plus 12 which is an octave. Um, all of these additions bring out the MIDI note numbers of each note in the scale. So now we've worked that out we can use a combination of the additions and the metro and cycle object to actually play these notes in a sequence. 
So if we turn on the metro, it will bang every thousand milliseconds again. But I've replaced the bang buttons with numbers. So instead of seeing a yellow flash every so often, you'll get a number output which will represent a MIDI note. Just to show you a bit more clearly what's going on, I've added buttons at the end of each number output. And as you can see, it's sending out, it's still sequencing round all of these scale notes. If you take a look at the MIDI Basics podcast, I will be going through using these patches and just going through them and showing you how to actually get sound out of them using a MIDI keyboard.